we're talking about forgiveness this month. We are moving on through this month with forgiveness. So many different issues, so many different facets of forgiveness, so many, so many different things to consider when we're talking about forgiveness, when we're actually doing the forgiveness work. The theme for the month is the givingness in forgiveness, the givingness and forgiveness. And I always say the biggest givingness, the greatest givingness and forgiveness is the gift that we give ourselves when we are doing the forgiveness because forgiveness is for us. The forgiveness is for the one doing the forgiving. And so oftentimes we get so caught up in thinking that we, we will withhold our forgiveness because we don't want to do something for somebody else or we don't want to let them off the hook that easily or we uh, don't want to condone wrongful behavior and none of that is the case. Forgiveness is for the person doing the forgiving. And that's the thing for us to keep in mind that forgiveness is for our own freedom. It's for our own healing. It's for our own openness. It's for our own uh, ability to, 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 to really experience our oneness with the divine. Because once we forgive, once we release, once we let go, we create that open heart, that open space through which spirit works, through which God is, 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 is able to just flow in and through and as each one of us. And it keeps us in that place of connection with God. And so forgiveness is the mo one of the most important spiritual practices that we can engage in because it keeps us open. It keeps us free. It keeps us in that place, as I said, of unity and oneness with God. And so that's what we've been talking about all month. And as I, as you know, I've said before, this is my favorite, favorite topic to talk about is forgiveness. I've been doing forgiveness work, forgiveness classes, forgiveness workshops uh, for years, since 1998, I think and uh, all over the country. And I really, really love doing the work, love working with people individually, love working with classes and uh, love doing the work myself because every time I do a class, I'm doing the work. And sometimes I, I, I'm surprised that I still have work to do, but you know what? As I always say, as long as we're in these bodies on this planet, there's more work to do, more work for us to do. And so today we're talking about, I'm talking about beyond the beyond. Beyond the beyond, and you know, beyond is that place after a, a, a specified time or event. After a specified time or event is beyond. And so learning to move beyond, learning to move beyond unforgiveness is what I'm asking us to do. Learning to move beyond the past, learning to move beyond old hurts, learning to, to move beyond old resentments, learning to, 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 to move beyond old past mistakes learning to just move beyond anything that has held us back, anything that has held us back, anything that has, has kept us stuck in any one place. We want to learn to move beyond that. And so we, we're continuing to move beyond when we're doing the forgiveness work. And forgiveness issues come up every day, every day, every day in ways that we can't even imagine, little ways and big ways. We often think about forgiveness when it comes to big things. But you know, there are little things too that, re that require us to be mindful, require us to be attentive, require us to, to be willing to just forgive on the spot, to let it go on the spot. And I, I was reminded of, of um, a friend who, who, who was in the grocery store a, a few weeks ago and she was looking for one specific thing in, 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 the, in the frozen foods aisle, uh, uh, frozen food section. And just as she got to the section that was a, there was a customer ahead of her who cleaned out that whole section of what she was there to get and put all those things in her in, in her basket. And my friend didn't wasn't able to get any because that person took it all. Now, that may seem like a little thing, but that could have been a forgiveness issue. <laughs> That could have morphed into something that angered her, something that 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 made her resentful, something that triggered something within her, or, 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 or just made her hold some kind of grudge because this person took all of the uh, all of the items in that particular section of the of the uh, of the freezer section, and so uh, that that as I said could be a forgiveness issue. It's like sitting out uh, in a parking lot in 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 a, in, in a shopping center waiting for a parking space. And as soon as the car backs out, somebody pulls in right in, uh, ahead of you. I've had that happen before. And you know, uh, that's a forgiveness issue. You have to take a deep breath and be mindful and be willing to move on. Be willing to move on, be willing to move beyond that. Because we're always, we're always in the process of moving beyond because, because if something is not happening in this moment, it happened in the past. I don't care if it was five minutes ago, that was the past. 
So if something, if, if something happened five minutes ago that really ticked you off, that really pushed your button, that really upset you, that's something in the past. And so you have to be, we have to be mindful so that we're always willing to move on. We're always willing to, to let that go. And when we get to the place where we can forgive on the spot, when we can let it go on the spot, where we can release it on the spot, then it doesn't have a chance to simmer. It doesn't have a chance to stew. It doesn't have a chance to build into a resentment or a grudge. It doesn't have a chance to, to, to gain any energy. It's just something that we can take a breath and let it go and forget about it and move on with our lives. Just like, just like my friend in the grocery store, you know, once she wasn't able to get what she was standing there to get, she got something else. She got a substitute and moved on. And I trust that she's not holding on to that uh, because it, it, you know, it wasn't a big deal. But it, you know, it could feel like something. Depends on all the other things that are going on with us. And so I'm inviting you to just be mindful, be aware that forgiveness issues come up all the time. And one thing that I want you to move beyond. There's several things I'm going to invite you to, to move beyond today. Moving beyond thinking that 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 forgiveness issues have to make sense. They don't. Oftentimes. Oftentimes, it, it doesn't make sense that we're holding something against somebody for a particular thing, or that somebody is holding something against us for a particular reason. It doesn't. Forgiveness issues don't have to make sense. So forgiveness does not require analysis on our parts. Oftentimes, we will analyze. Well, maybe they didn't really mean it. Well, maybe they were having a bad day. Well, maybe they were. Uh, may, maybe maybe they didn't know that they did this, or maybe they didn't know that I would be upset, or, or whatever the case may be. All of those things may be true. But if you're holding something against that person, whether they meant it or not, whether they knew about it or not, the thing for you to do is to do the forgiveness. The thing for us to do is to do the forgiveness work. And so we don't have to analyze and, and we don't have to say it doesn't make sense. Uh, it's just, just do it, just do it. Because I always say you can't overdose on forgiveness. You cannot overdose on forgiveness. It will not hurt you. When in doubt, forgive. When in doubt, forgive. That's, that's one of my mantras. When in doubt, forgive. If, you, if you're not sure whether somebody intended something or not, or whether they really uh, meant to do something a particular way, or whether that's the best they could do, if you're doubting, forgive. You cannot overdose on forgiveness. Don't, don't forget that. And so what I'm asking us to do is to move beyond all these preconceived notions we have about forgiveness and just surrender to forgiveness. I love what Charles is saying about surrendering. Just surrender. I surrender. I'm ready for my change. And trust me, forgiveness will change your life. Forgiveness will change your life because it, it will free you up. And so just, just be, be in that place of readiness for the change. Be in that place of readiness to let go. Be in that place of readiness to open your heart. Be in that place of readiness to move forward in your life. And so as we, and, 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 and as we are moving beyond where we are now, one of the things I'm inviting you to move beyond is the notion that it's too late. That it's too late to forgive. It, 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 so much time has passed. The other person has moved on. Forgiveness is always possible. It doesn't matter whether the other person has moved on in, in death or moved on in, on this plane. But let's, let's say death, for instance. If someone has died, you can still forgive someone who died because it's you who's holding the grudge. It's you who's holding the resentment. They have moved on to another plane. And to the degree that we're holding, yes, forgiveness is, it, it goes from eternity to eternity. Just like the reading says, just like Ernest Holmes says, love goes from eternity to eternity. Forgiveness goes from eternity to eternity. So it doesn't matter whether, whether we're on this side of the veil or on the other side of the veil. If you're holding something against somebody, if there's a resentment, if there's a grudge, if there's a, a, a hurt, if there's pain, if there's whatever it is, that we are experiencing, let it go. Forgive that person. It doesn't matter where they are. It doesn't matter where they are. It matters where you are. It matters where you are in your willingness to surrender and to open your heart and to let, to let go of whatever it is that you may be holding. So forgiveness is always possible. So move beyond the thinking that it's too late uh, or there are times when, when, when we think that because we've done some forgiveness work that we've done enough and, and we look up and here it is again. So maybe it didn't take. So no, move beyond that thinking also. Forgiveness is like peeling an onion. And I've said that before, you peel the, you peel the, the top skin off and it gets all smooth and you're going along uh, about your, your life. And then all of a sudden that little 
the little piece at the top pops up and you peel, you pick at it. And then another whole layer comes off another whole layer comes off and that's how forgiveness works. And then it's smooth and you're going on with your life. And then here's that little piece again, that's sticking up at the top and then you peel it. And then another whole layer comes off. And sometimes that's how we do the forgiveness work when we're dealing with one person or one issue that comes up that is very, very difficult for us. And the thing for us to do is to keep in mind that forgiveness is always possible. Forgiveness is always possible. And no matter how many times we forgive the same person, do it over and over and over again, as many times as is necessary for you to be free. Because so long as we are unforgiving, we are walking around with that other person controlling our lives, that other person controlling our, our hearts, that other person controlling our thoughts, that other person is living rent-free in our heads when we are walking around thinking about something that happened with another person. Uh, another thing that keeping in mind also is when it comes to self-forgiveness is being able to forgive ourselves. Being able to forgive ourselves is so, so, so important. And I hear so many people say that if I could just forgive myself, I can forgive other people, but it's really, really hard for me to forgive myself. Well, you know, Ernest Holmes says that, that if there were no divine forgiveness, that we would, not, we would not be able to transcend the mistakes that we have made. And I say that if there were no self-forgiveness, we would not be able to transcend the mistakes we have made either. Because if we can't forgive ourselves, we can't transcend those mistakes. We can't free ourselves. We can't, we can't release ourselves. We can't, let, we can't let ourselves off the hook when we can't forgive ourselves. And so the second thing I'm inviting you to go beyond is going beyond the thought that there is some act that is unforgivable. Nothing is unforgivable unless you make it so. Nothing is unforgivable unless you make it so. Nothing is unforgivable unless you make it so. Because forgiveness is always possible. Forgiveness is always, always possible. I don't care how horrendous it is that uh, an act may be that someone else did. I don't care how horrendous it may be an act that you did, whatever that may be, how, 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 how guilty you may feel about it, how regretful you may be about it whatever, it, nothing is unforgivable unless you make it so. So be willing to forgive yourself. Be willing to forgive yourself. Be willing to, 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 to release yourself from your own judgment and your own, on your own resentment, your own shame and your own guilt and your own regrets. Be willing to release yourself from all those things because nothing is unforgivable unless you make it so. Now, that's not to say that forgiveness is easy because it isn't. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's easier than others. Some things are easier to forgive than others. Some, 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 some acts are easier to, 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 to let go than uh, we let go of the, the feeling. It depends on the pain and, and the involved, the harm involved. And so many things are, 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 are dependent on how, how readily we can let some things go. But the point is that we can let them go. We have to do the work over and over and over and over and over. And then over again, we have to really surrender to forgiveness. And, and, and you know, surrendering to forgiveness doesn't always get us to forgiveness. It gets us to willingness. It gets us to willingness. When we, are, when, when we surrender to forgiveness, we're saying, I'm willing to do the work. I'm willing to let it go. I'm willing to, 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 to walk this path of forgiveness. And that's what's, that's, that, that's, that's all that's required. There, 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 there was a time, many times, my mother would, would different things would, would come up. And my mom would say, when you're doing the best you can, that's all the Lord requires. And so when we, when I, I was just thinking that when we get to willingness, that's all the Lord requires because willingness opens our hearts. And when we have an open heart, God can work through our willingness. God can work with our willingness. But when we're not willing, that's resistance. I mean, that's the other side of willingness is resistance. If we aren't willing, we're resistant. And so being willing to be forgive, when we are say, okay, I surrender to forgiveness. Now that doesn't mean that you can maybe do it right then and let everything go right then and one fell swoop. It would be great if you can. That would be wonderful if you can. And if you can't, you still have surrendered to the possibility. You still have, have surrendered to the possibility and just opened your mind and opened your heart to the possibility of forgiveness. And that's where we want to get to. We want to get to the willingness 
the willingness to forgive. When we get to the willingness to forgive, then we can release the notion that anything is unforgivable because it really isn't, because it's all up to each one of us. So let's, let's take a breath together for a moment and just move into that place of knowing that in order to, well, a couple of thoughts are coming to mind all at the same time, so they're kind of canceling each other out. <laughs> but but what what I'm, what's coming through right now is that I'm I'm I'm, I'm thinking of a of a poem by Hafiz, the great Sufi master, uh, Hafiz, the cruel knife. The, a, 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 a young woman once said to Hafiz, Hafiz, what is the once asked Hafiz, Hafiz, what is the sign of someone who knows God? And Hafiz looked at her, he paused for a while, he looked at her deep into her eyes, and then he replied, someone who knows God has dropped the knife, has dropped the cruel knife that they hold against themselves. And well, that's not what he said. They have dropped the cruel knife that they hold against their tender self and others. Someone who, who knows God has dropped the cruel knife the cruel knife they hold against their tender self and others. And so that's what I'm inviting you to do. Drop the knife, drop the knife, drop the knife. Your knife may be called judgment. Your knife may be called anger. Your knife may be called blame. Your knife may be called shame. Your knife may be called guilt. Your knife may be called regrets. Your knife may be called all kinds of things. But when we hold that cruel knife, we use it against our tender self. And we use it against others. And Hafiz is saying, one who knows God, drop that knife, drop that cruel knife that they hold against their tender self and others. And so that's what I'm inviting us to do today is drop that knife, drop that knife, let it go, drop that knife. And you know what? Sometimes we'll drop the knife and pick it up again. And I'm suggesting we don't wanna do that. We don't wanna drop that knife and let your hands be free. Drop that knife and free your hands up. Drop that knife and free your heart up. Drop that knife and create that space through which spirit can work. Drop that knife and create that space through which love can flow. Drop that knife and create that space through which, through, through, through which freedom comes. So we are free to live. We're free to be all that we were created to be. We are free to live in oneness with the divine. We are free to be that place and, and space of expression for God. We're free to be that individualized expressions of God that we are. And we are free to, to, to allow God to express to the fullest, to the fullest, because we don't have anything blocking, because we've dropped that knife and we don't pick it up again. And so I'm inviting you today to drop the knife. I'm inviting you today to let it go. I'm inviting you today to move beyond the knife. Once you drop it, move beyond it. Move beyond it. So we wanna keep going beyond the beyond. Whatever limitations we have set up, whatever, whatever boundaries we have set, move beyond. Be willing to move beyond them and forgiveness will take us beyond those. Forgiveness will take us beyond that. That's the givingness and forgiveness. This is something that we owe to ourselves. The change, if we're ready for our change, as Charles Holt was saying so beautifully in that music today, in that song today, if we're ready for our change, I forgive me. Let that be your mantra. I forgive me. I forgive me. I forgive me. I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive them. And don't think that forgiveness has to be limited to people that we know, to our narrow circles of friends, of, of, of people that we know. We can turn on our TV any day and see things that we need to forgive somebody for, things that, that push our buttons, things that, that really anger us, things that really upset us, things that really appear to be unfair. There's always a forgiveness issue someplace, somewhere for us to practice forgiveness. And Michael Beckwith says, you know, we should all highly evolve people race to, 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 to see who can be the first to forgive. 
highly evolved people race to see who can be the first to forgive. So we want to really be in that place of, of being the first to forgive. We aren't waiting for somebody else to forgive. And, 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 while, and, and while this is on my mind, it, I just want to say to you that it isn't necessary for forgetting forgiveness for us to go to the other person and say, I forgive you. Because uh, in doing that, that may create another forgiveness issue because they may not be nearly as thrilled with you forgiving them as, uh, as you think that they would be. They may not even know that you have a reason or agree that you have a reason to forgive them. You can, you know, it, that's a choice that you make, whether you want to go and talk to the other person, but it is not necessary in forgiveness. And sometimes, as I said, it may not be possible to do so because the other person may have passed on or the other person may, you may not even see them again or whatever the case may be. The important thing is to keep in mind that forgiveness is for you. And so when you are doing the forgiveness work, just do it so that you can just move on. Just do it and then do it again so that you can continue, continue to move on. And so I invite you today to really, really, really do this work, free yourself up, forgive yourself so that you can transcend your mistakes of the past. Start to do the work now. Start to let it go now. Start to move into the now, this now moment with an open heart and an open mind and a willingness to allow God to be God in your life as your life. Each and every moment of each and every day to allow God to guide us and direct us. Ernest Holmes says that there's a divine intelligence to, to, there's an intelligence to which we may come for guidance a direction for inspiration, a power responding to us, a presence pressing against us, a spirit animating us, a light within us. And that intelligence is the eternal, the, 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 the essence of God, the eternal presence, the Father within. Allow that divine intelligence Allow yourself to come to, not go to, because that would be separate. Come to within us. Allow ourselves to come to that divine intelligence for guidance, for direction. And know that that intelligence is also that power responding to us, that presence pressing against us, that, that, that spirit animating us and that light within us. That is always there, it's always available. And we turn to it every time we open our hearts and open our minds. Let's take a breath. Let's take a breath. I feel like I could go on and on about forgiveness and I'm not. I'm gonna give you the opportunity to really consider it, to really surrender to it, to really, to really show yourself that you're ready for that change in your life, that you are really ready to walk this path of forgiveness. The path of freedom is what it is. I invite you to do that right here and right now. So let's take a breath as we move into prayer now. Just moving into that place of knowing and sensing and feeling God's presence, knowing that God's presence is the only presence there is. The only life that is, the only mind that is, the only intelligence that is, the only activity that is, is God. This onlyness that is God is my life. It is my very life. It is that from which I can never be separate. It is that, 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 that which is always right where I am. It is, it, 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 it is that presence from whose, from, from, from whose presence I can never depart. I can never, ever, ever be in any spot where God is not. Because God is my life. God is that with which I am one knowing that I am made in the image and likeness and out of pure spirit itself. This is the truth that I know. And the same truth that I know for myself, I know for each one of us, that we are each made in the image and likeness and out of pure spirit itself. That we are each free to be free, that we are each free to be all that we were created to be, that we are each free to create that space through which God can operate as God, as each one of us because of our unity, our union with God, our oneness with God. And so just knowing this truth, I speak this word for each of us this day, just speaking a word for willingness, speaking a word of surrender, speaking a word for forgiveness, 
as we open our hearts, we open our minds, we release and let go of those things that we've been holding. We forgive ourselves for mistakes we have made and release and let go. We forgive ourselves and we forgive others. We let go of grudges, anger, shame, guilt, whatever it is we may be holding, anything that would block the free flow of spirit, we let it go. We let it go and we allow that free flow to take place within each of us. And as it happens, healing is happening in each heart, healing of the hurts, healing of the pain, healing of the fear, healing, healing of the doubts, healing of all things that need to be healed. When we let go and allow the free flow of spirit, healing happens. And this is the word that I'm speaking for each of us this day. And so I know that as we move through this time, we do so with ease and with grace that God goes before each of us making straight our way. God guides us and directs us every step of the way God shows up as whatever it is that we may need in any moment, of any day. God shows up as the thing itself, whatever it is, whatever we call it, God shows up as that, as that. All needs met, all needs met, all needs met. And so we just stay in a place of openness. We stay in a place of trusting God more than we trust anything and anybody. We stay in a place of knowing, knowing that the presence of God is always right where we are. Knowing this truth. And this is a truth that sets us free. This is a truth that sets us free. This is a truth that heals us. I know that there's healing that's happening in the body temple, healing that's happening in our bodies of affairs, healing that's happening in all of our lives, healing that's happening in our hearts for the loss of loved ones, a loss of anything. Healing is happening everywhere because God is everywhere present. And so I pause momentarily so that you may speak the names of anyone you'd like held in prayer. You may speak their names silently or loud and you may speak them now. And so for all those whose names are spoken here this day, I know that God is right where each one is, blessing and keeping them. That there's not a spot where God is not, that God is in the midst of every situation and circumstance. Every situation and circumstance, God is in the midst of. This prayer goes out to anyone on this planet needing a prayer this day, needing a word spoken this day, knowing that God is in the midst everywhere present. God is in the midst everywhere present. God is in the midst everywhere present. I give great thanks for this word spoken here this day. I give great thanks for the perfect manifestation of this word this day. I give great thanks for the forgiveness that is happening everywhere. The freedom that we are experiencing in every aspect of our lives. I speak a special word of blessing for our government officials who I know that God is in the midst of decisions. God is in the midst of guiding and directing. God is in the midst of everything everything that's going on. And I know decisions are being made for the highest and the best, for all concerned, as we let go of divisions, as they let go of divisions and see that oneness, that unity that is in back of all things. And so I simply say, thank you, Father, Mother God, for the word spoken here this day and the perfect manifestation of this word. I say, thank you, Father, Mother God, for everything, everything, everything. I simply allow it to be. And I know that all is well, but I know that all is God. And so it is.